हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर एम एन गुप्ता एमेरिटस प्रोफेसर एट आई आई टी दिल्ली टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक ऑन मॉड्यूल कॉल्ड माइलॉइड सिस्टम अगेन बिकॉज दिस इज द सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ द डिस्कशन सो वी विल कंटिन्यू talking about the myeloid system and we'll pick the thread where we left in the last module this module of course also belongs to the paper called immunology in today's lecture we will learn about the different cell types which results from the further differentiation of the myeloid progenitor cell we had already talked about how the stem cell divides between the progenitor cells of two different kinds today's lecture is to learn about the differentiation and functions of the following cells of the myeloid system which play important roles in innate immunity these cells are neutrophils and macrophages so the concept covered in this module is that how the myeloid precursor cell or the progenitor cell differentiates into neutrophils which are also called granulocytes because of the presence of the granules there they are also abbreviated as pmng and we will learn why we will also see that the myeloid precursor cell also gives rise to another kind of cells which are part of innate immunity which are very important these are called macrophages this lecture will also cover that how these two kinds of a myeloid cells they function what is their mechanisms where each one of them come into play and at times how do how do they even synergize with each other as a part of the overall innate immunity mechanisms in the animal so let us again recall that the common myeloid progenitor cells differentiates further into numerous cells these cells patrol the body via blood stream and lymph which permeates all the tissues in the body several of these also stay in these tissues they take residence in some tissues and during this stay there in these tissues they become further specialized we had looked at the differentiation of the blood stem cells into myeloid cells earlier let us recollect that again the development of blood cells as we explained is called hematopoiesis most of the cells of the immune system originates from a common hematopoietic stem cell we also had pointed out that hematopoiesis begins in the early yolk sac during embryogenesis this process moves over to the fetal liver fetal spleen and in the bone marrow of the neonate and adult hence the common multipotential hematopoietic stem cells are found in the fetal liver fetal spleen and in the bone marrow we also had pointed out that hematopoiesis continues in the bone marrow throughout the life 
and it is these cells present in the bone marrow which replicate and seed other organs. Let us now look at the white blood cells which are formed from the common myeloid progenitor in slightly more detail. The white blood cells or leukocytes which are formed from the common myeloid progenitor are monocytes, immature dendritic cells, neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils. Neutrophils, eosinophils and basophils are called as granulocytes as their cytoplasmic granules have characteristic staining properties. These three are also called polymorph nuclear leukocytes as their nuclei have irregular shapes. These circulate in the blood and enter the tissues only where and when there is an infection or inflammation. Immature dendritic cells enter the peripheral tissues via the bloodstream. It is there that they mature. And this happens after encountering an antigen. They migrate to the lymph nodes. Here these mature dendritic cells activate the antigen specific T cells. Monocytes also enter the tissues via the bloodstream and differentiate into macrophages. These become tissue resident phagocytic cells. Mass cells arise in the bone marrow, but their complete maturation occurs in the tissues. We will see later the importance of the mass cells in allergic responses. Let us look at these mass cells and basophils in slightly more detail. Basophils and mass cells have both similar structure and function. Basophils circulate in the blood and their population is quite low. Overall, it is less than 0.2% of the granular leukocytes. Mass cells are found around blood vessels in the connective tissues, in gut lining, lungs, and genitourinary tract. Thus, these are more or less ubiquitous. In the body. Both basophils and mast cells originate in the bone marrow. Basophils are stained with basic dyes due to their granulocytes. Let us look at the normal leukocyte values in the peripheral blood. All leukocytes, that is the white blood cells, their median value is 7000 cells per millimeter cube. The range is normally between 4300 and 10,000. The percentage of total differential count is 100, of course. Out of these, the total neutrophils corresponds to the percentage of total differential count of 55. The median value for the total neutrophils is 4000. The range is 1800 to 7200. Bend neutrophils have a median value of 500. Their percentage in the total differential count is 10. Segmented neutrophils, on the other hand, have a median value of 3500. The range is between 1000 and 6000. Percentage of the total differential count is 45. Lymphocytes, which include both B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes, they constitute 36% of total differential count. Their range is normally between 1500 
to 4000 with a median value of 2500. Monocytes have a value median value of 450 with a range between 200 and 900 percentage of total differential count 6. Eosinophils have a median value of 150. The range can vary from 0 to 700 because these are involved in mostly they don't have to be present unless there is some infection or allergy. So the percentage of the total differential count is about 2. Basophils have a median value of 30 with a range of 0 to 150 again and their percentage of total differential count is about 1 only. So these numbers show the relative populations of various white blood cells or leukocytes. These ranges which have been shown for the person who has no infection. These numbers change as a result of infection and therein lies the value of these numbers because they serve a very useful diagnostic purpose. We have often referred to phagocytes. What are phagocytes? Phagocytosis as a phenomenon was discovered by the Russian scientist Ali Matshinikov in 1882 who observed that some motile cells within the starfish larvae body cavity ingested any inserted foreign material. Matshinikov based his view that antibodies are not important in the immune defense based upon this observation. We have referred to this controversy about the importance of the cells and the antibodies in the, in the immune response. Matshinikov's alternative view was that these phagocytic cells were universal and were the only important component of the defense system. While this did not turn out to be true, but it is correct that the phagocytes as cells and phagocytosis as a phenomenon are a very important part of the immune response. This controversy initiated by Matshenikov continued and in a very bitter form almost till 1904 when an Englishman Elmuth Wright discovered opsonins which are substances that facilitate phagocytosis. We know now that both humoral immunity and cellular immunity are important. Phagocytes are indeed universal and important but they are part of the innate immunity like other cells of the myeloid lineage. Some important opsonins are as we have indicated earlier antibodies, complement components especially C3B, fibronectins which are the glycoproteins which occur both in free form as well as part of the cell membrane. Polymorphonuclear neutrophils granulocytes constitute about 60 to 75 percent of the blood. WC in human and other carnivores and 20 to 30 percent in ruminants. Let us look at the life span of the leukocytes. For neutrophils it is in the range of 2 to 5 days. For eosinophils it is in the range of 7 to 12 days. For basophils, it is in the range of 12 to 15 days. For monocytes, it is in the range of 2 to 5 days. And for lymphocytes, it is actually from half day to 1 day. So, basophils probably have the largest life span, as we see, and the lymphocytes actually have the shortest life span which as we said is between just half a day and one day. The process of neutrophil maturation begins in the bone marrow and various stages are 
myeloblast promyelocyte myelocyte and in the post mitotic pool they are in the form of meta myelocyte band and mature neutrophils that also gives us a timeline for at which this maturation leads to the various forms of the neutrophils after about 12 days approximately 10% of the mature neutrophils are released into the peripheral blood where they have a half life of approximately 6 to 10 hours eventually the neutrophils migrate into the tissues by diapedesis the percentage of neutrophils at each stage of the development ranges from about 2% at, at the myeloblast stage to almost 25% at the mature neutrophil stage. Let us look at the structure of the neutrophil in a little more detail. They have a diameter of about 12 micrometers. Their cytoplasm has two types of granules. One type of granules are azerophils. These are called primary granules and are electron dense and consist of enzymes like myeloperoxidase, lysozyme, elastase, beta glucuronidase, and cathepsin B. Then we have a secondary granules which are also called specific granules. These granules also contain some proteins and enzymes, specifically lysozyme, collagenase, and lactoferrin. Neutrophils are characterized by having a small Golgi and some mitochondria, but they do not have any ribosomal or endoplasmic reticulum and hence cannot synthesize proteins. Let us look at the phagocytosis by neutrophils. In the beginning, the phagocyte encounters the pathogen bacterium. It adheres to the bacterium. This is followed by membrane activation. And after that, there is an initiation of phagocytosis. Eventually, the whole bacterium is surrounded and this is the phagosome formation. Then there is a fusion where the granules of the neutrophils start attacking this phagosome and that leads to the killing and digestion of the bacterium. Ultimately, the degradation products are released from the neutrophil. So, the whole process starts with an invagination of the cell membrane of the neutrophil. This picture depicts the process which shows that it really looks like pathogen being eaten up and once it is taken up inside the cell, it is destroyed by various mechanisms. Phagocytosis that is destroying of the foreign material is the main function of the neutrophils. The first stage of phagocytosis is chemotaxis, in which neutrophils follow a chemical gradient and migrate towards the source of the chemical. Such chemicals include factors from damaged cells, leukotrienes, which are actually metabolites of arachidonate. They also include a peptide generated during the complement system activation called C5A and some factors from mast cells. The foreign particle gets opsonized by antibody or C3, which is another complement system member. The result is that it has a lower zeta potential. This is essential as both neutrophils and foreign particles have negative charge 
if this lowering of the zeta potential by opsonization does not occur, the neutrophils and the bacterium will repel each other. So, the adherence of the neutrophil to the particle or to the bacteria requires opsonization as an important step. Once both have encountered each other, the neutrophils have receptors for antibody or C3 which have opsonized the bacterium or the particle and thus is able to bind to the opsonized particle. In surface phagocytosis, the particle lodged in the tissue is trapped between the tissue surface and neutrophils. This trapping facilitates contact between the particle and the neutrophils. The particle gets drawn into the cell and is a, enclosed in a vacuole forming a phagosome. The attachment of the particle to the neutrophil membrane is a signal for the granules to move, which then fuse with the phagosome to form phagellolysosome. Gram positive organisms are rapidly hydrolyzed by the lysosome. Some organisms like Brucella abortus and Listeria monocytogens resist these hydrolases and may even multiply within the phagocytic cells. In fact, bacteria like Streptococcus pneumena, which have capsule containing carbohydrates and hence is hydrophilic, has more essential requirement of opsonization before being ingested by neutrophils. Oxidative mechanism plays an even more important role in phagocytosis by neutrophils. These mechanisms are shown in this figure. The enzyme NADPH oxidase is the cell surface enzyme and it forms superoxide anion. NADP signals operation of the pentose phosphate pathway to generate energy for the cell. The superoxide anion is converted by the enzyme superoxide dismutase to hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide in turn is converted to hypochlorite ions by another enzyme which is called myeloperoxidase. Hypochlorite ions kill bacteria by oxidizing their proteins. The reaction is similar to the one which is used in swimming pools during their chlorination. There is a yet another mechanism by which neutrophils can destroy microbes. The reaction of hydrogen peroxide with superoxide anion generates hydroperoxide and a singlet oxygen. Both can destroy bacteria by oxidation of their components. The oxidative pathway is also known as the respiratory burst and this is obviously important as children deficient in either superoxide dismutase or myeloperoxidase are known to be more prone to recurrent bacterial infections. Neutrophils after moving from the bone marrow do not last long and in fact end up participating in phagocytosis only a few times. Neutrophils are about 8 into 10 to the power 6 per ml of blood and die by apoptosis. Their main job is to travel all over the body and patrolling it for detecting invasion. They also play an important role in inflammation. The table here gives the complete details of their surface receptors which enables them to act towards variety of microbes. These surface molecules are pattern recognition receptors, complement receptors, FC receptors and chemo attractant receptors. In fact, one can talk of the mononuclear phagocytic system. It consists of tissue bound matured monocytes which are another kind of phytic cells. It was earlier called reticuloendothelial system. 
the cells of this system are named depending on their location. For example, in the blood stream, they are simply referred to as monocytes. In liver, Kupffer cells. Kidney, mesangial cells. Lungs, alveolar macrophages. Brain, microglial cells. Spleen and lymph nodes. Those cells are called sinus macrophages and peritoneal cavity. With the location in peritoneal cavity, they are called serosal macrophages. An animal injected with carbon particles results in their distribution in certain cells all over the body. The German scientist Ludwig Eschhoff, upon observing this, called these cells as constituting reticuloendothelial system. In fact, in that experiment, in many cells, the uptake of these particles was not related to their function. However, included were the macrophages, which are also distributed all over the body in various tissues. Let us look at the mononuclear phagocytic system in detail, in somewhat detailed fashion. While in suspension, Macrophages are round cells of about 14 to 20 micrometer diameter. But they assume different shapes in different locations where they reside. As a consequence of cell mediated response to some microbes, these macrophages can also enlarge. And during this process, their lysosomes, which are present in these macrophages, they increase in number. If the invading particle, antigenic particle or infectious microbe is too large, then many macrophages fuse together and after this fusion, or as a result of this fusion, they form multinucleated giant cells. Macrophages resident in tissues have long half-lives and their population renews itself at rate of about 1% per day. The phagocytic mechanisms of macrophages are very similar to neutrophils and follow similar stages of chemotaxis, attachment to the microbe, endocytosis followed by phagosome formation which is basically fusion of lysosomes with phagosome and then destruction of the microbe. One may ask why infection skill in spite of such a sophisticated immune system. There are situations when the immune system is overwhelmed. Inhalation of asbestos particle is one such example. Asbestos was used widely as an insulator at one time. And now it is considered a health hazard. Let us see why it happened and let us also understand how macrophages, the function of the macrophages is involved in this. In cases where the injected particles are innocuous carbon particles, macrophages carry the particles to the lungs or intestines and then to the lumen of the lungs or intestines for elimination. In case of asbestos particles, this route leads to lung damage and is a life-threatening condition called asbestosis. The macrophages have less intensive oxidative action and have catalase instead of myeloperoxidase. These receptors enable macrophages to act on foreign material opsonized by molecules recognized by these receptors. Macrophages upon encounter with microbes or damaged cells 
release interleukin 1. This protein causes fever, recruits neutrophils. Inflammation is an extremely complex process. Macrophages release large number of substances upon reaching the site of microbial attack and are important in the healing process as well. Macrophages can process some antigens. Macrophages possess the capacity to synthesize proteins. This is necessary as several secreting proteins by macrophages play important roles in various biochemical processes. So, students, let us now summarize what we have learnt in this module. We have learnt about some cells of the myeloid system. We also have learnt that these cells are part of the innate immunity but act in synergy with lymphocytes which are part of the acquired immunity. In particular, we have looked at the functions of neutrophils and macrophages and we saw that these two cooperate often during this immune response. So, out of the several cells of the myeloid system, we have talked only of two that is neutrophils and macrophages. We have not covered all the cells of the myeloid system and we will in the next module learn about rest of these cells which are part of the myeloid system.